With all the layoffs and closed studios, it's easy to look at the future of video games and be worried. Are the quality of our games going to decline? Look at that! Wow! <laughs> that is... How much was this game? I, I, I believe it was like 60 bucks, maybe? 60 fucking dollars! Oh my god! Are we doomed for a constant push towards live service games? Are our favorite developers going to be forced to make more games that they don't necessarily want to make? Probably. But, there are things to look forward to, especially for horror games. So here are three things to look forward to if you're not just a fan of horror games, but really cool <laughs> games. <laughs> okay, if I'm going to be honest, I don't think Silent Hill is going to be very good. And it's not just because James Sunderland looks a little too old for that haircut, but something about that gameplay just feels a little off. That aside, I still think it's exciting. We haven't had a mainline Silent Hill game since March 2012, and that's more than a decade. What's more exciting is the return of Akira Yamaoka to a mainline Silent Hill game. He recently returned for Silent Hill to Short Message, and although I enjoyed playing it, it's not exactly what we wanted. Silent Hill Downpour was composed by Daniel Litch, who you may know from his work on Dexter, and although he didn't do a bad job, Akira Yamaoka is just too important to keep from doing a mainline Silent Hill game. He's also worked with Bloober Team, the team developing Silent Hill 2 Remake, on the medium. Honestly, it's just nice to be back in the world of Silent Hill. I'm hoping for the best, but I'm preparing for the worst. My guess though, it's gonna be super okay. 2002 was a great year for horror games. The Resident Evil Remake and Resident Evil Zero both came out in the same year. Aside from Resident Evil, Eternal Darkness, Clock Tower 3, and the Xbox version of Silent Hill 2 all came out in 2002. And also, The Thing. The Thing was a game I've always wanted to play. I remember reading about it in magazines like GamePro and immediately fantasized about playing it. I just never got to. And as time passed, I became less hopeful that I ever would. And even if I did, I wondered if it would be too outdated to enjoy. If you got to play it when it was originally released, chances are you're really excited. And if you haven't, you should be. It's also being developed by Night Dive Studios, known and praised for their remasters like System Shock, Shadow Man, and more recently, Star Wars Dark Forces. They brought on Mark Atkinson, the technical director for the original game, and in a recent interview by Night Dive's new podcast, Deep Dive, he said this. So when they came along and said, hey, this is this is happening, we got we got the rights, uh, you know, I was, I was fully up for it. And I've tried to, to help out as much as possible uh, and just kind of explain how things work in the engine and how things work in some of the gameplay and, and help steer them. You know, the questions like, did you do this for a good reason or did you just run out of time? Night Dive seems to care about game preservation, and I'm excited to finally play the thing. Welcome to this year's Game Developers Choice Awards. If you don't know me, hi, I'm Milana, and I am unbelievably honored to be your host this evening. But I have to admit, sort of a bummer of a year to have been asked to celebrate the games industry for no particular reason. Mostly the record layoffs, though. So. It's been great. Layoffs and studio closures have plagued the industry since last year more than any other time in the history of gaming. Although there are many reasons for layoffs and studio closures, one reason in particular has been especially infuriating. Closing studios and mass layoffs to appease investors for constant growth. It doesn't matter if you made a great game and it sold well. Spider-Man 2 sold over 11 million copies and 2.5 million just after it was released. It had a score of 90 on Metacritic, but along with Naughty Dog and Guerrilla Games, over 900 people lost their jobs. So, how much did it cost to make Spider-Man 2? 300 million dollars. And that's a success story. Suicide Squad failed critically and cost over 200 million to make. So, why am I bringing this up? Because of this man, Jason Blum. Jason Blum is the founder and CEO of Blumhouse Productions, the studio responsible for Get Out, Paranormal Activity, and The Purge. In February of last year, 
Jason Blum founded Blumhouse Games and has said this at Summer Games Fest this year. He's getting more and more popular. Our movies are working. It's working on streaming. It's working in live events. And we wanted to try and take our approach to movies and apply it to games. And that's what you see here. We're going to do independent games. We're going to look for creators and give them a platform and, and encourage these creators to be weird and subversive and find the most effed up, scariest things they can and put them into really cool games. <laughs> well, they, they... Yeah, so the formula in broad strokes is we only make low budget movies. We get paid nothing, the directors get paid as little as we're allowed, which is scale. The actors get paid as little as they're allowed, which is scale. And the pitch to the filmmaker coming in, my, my greatest successes, or our greatest successes of it have been with filmmakers who've, who've kind of had a hit and then kind of gone off a little bit. So James Wan did Saw, and he did two movies for Universal you've never heard of, and he came into my office and he is pissed. They're in movie jail. He, they're in movie jail, they're pissed at the system. And one of the biggest reasons they're pit, where we get mad at the system is, we go to work for a studio, the studio tells us what to do, the movie bombs, we get blamed. So we being the filmmakers, get blamed. So that is a very powerful tool that our company uses, and we say to James, or whoever it may be, can't promise you a hit, but I'm gonna give you final cut, and I promise the movie will be your own. Shortly after being called to stage at Summer Games Fest, he showed off a trailer ranging from pixelated to 3D horror games with different vibes and feels, and I'm totally for it. I have a gut feeling that his video games endeavor is going to be a successful one, and if that's the case, I hope to see more companies mimic this approach. Games don't have to cost two to three hundred million to be successful, and to be good. Jeff Keighley pointed this out this year at Summer Games Fest. Yes. Take a look at this list from Game Discover of the top 10 best-selling new games on Steam so far this year. Two of them are considered, you know, big company games, but the other eight come from indie, mid-sized teams, or solo developers. So to wrap things up, whether it's a new remake or a new remaster or the upcoming slew of new IP, it's an exciting time for really cool <laughs> games.